Hello everyone. In my last video, a viewer named Jim Sebring asked if I could talk about the different ways of mounting dial indicators. Let's look at some indicators and see if we can clear some things up for him. Jim specifically asked about the lug back on this type of indicator, so let's start there. This style gets screwed on to a variety of bases through the hole in this lug. You can see that here with this Mighty Mag base, as well as with this run-of-the-mill indicator base. These guys come with an adapter that, let's be honest, probably gets lost when most people unpack it, but that's why it's there. It consists of this knurled nut that fastens the indicator to this stud. Then the adapter is held through the hole in this little doodad in the base. These holes can also be used to hold indicators directly if they have a stem of that size, or you can use the screw-on studs that come with a lot of dial test indicators. I will say these clamps are very chintzy. There's quite a lot of slop in between them, and I've seen these outer sheet metal pieces break. Also, the plastic handles that come with them tend to break as well, which is why I made this guy. I really prefer the clamping setup on my Noga indicator base. These have a Fletcher style clamp down at the end that has a couple of different holes for different size indicator shanks, as well as a dovetail. We'll get back to the dovetail in a little bit. For now, I want to show you more about these Mighty Mag bases. I use these to measure travel on a machine, and they are really simple and cheap. There are several different spots to mount indicators on them depending on your needs. You can screw the indicator lug to the tapped holes on either side or the end. There's also a reamed hole in this end that fits the shank of that type of indicator or a rod of that diameter to act like one of these indicator bases. There's also a teardrop shaped hole down on this end for holding a variety of other round shanks. I have never actually found an occasion where I needed to use these two holes, but if you have, I'd love to hear about it down in the comments. If you don't want to use the lug on the back of the indicator, you can take it off by removing these four screws and replacing the stock back with a magnetic one. I have this one stuck to a tool holder at all times so I can indicate parts in the lathe. I don't remember where I got this, possibly from a vendor at the Names Show up in Michigan. Several suppliers offer them though, and I'll put a link to one down in the description, along with links to some of the other tools I've mentioned. You could very easily make a special back for these indicators as well if you need one. Just reproduce the screw hole pattern and make it whatever shape that fits your needs. I'd like to take a moment to welcome my newest patron over on Patreon, Nick Anderthal, who joined at the Master Machinist level. Welcome, my caveman friend. If you'd like to help support the channel just like this glorious, strong-browed early hominid, check out the link down in the description. Let's get back to the dovetail mount I mentioned earlier. These are used extensively on dial test indicators, and, as I mentioned before, my Noga base has a dovetail built into its clamp. Most dial test indicators also come with a couple of posts with dovetailed ends. These slip onto one of the dovetails and then get tightened by screwing in the threaded lug. Then that gets held in the indicator base, just like the adapter for the lug back indicators. On the cheap imports, these dovetails are quite sloppy to say the least, but they still work. My Interrapid indicator has a mounting stem in addition to the dovetail for added versatility. This can be repositioned to get the dial of the indicator where you can see it. There are a couple of different styles available, one that has the stem coming out the back like this, and another one with the stem coming out the top. Some of you may be thinking, isn't that just another axis of motion? Won't it be less rigid? In theory, sure, but not in practice. This thing is really solid, and repositioning it takes quite a bit of effort. There are a lot of other parts that are going to move before this thing does. Of course, it's not all about magnetic bases. This is my Indicol brand holder that clamps onto the spindle of the milling machine. I use that for tramming in the head and dialing parts in on the mill. It has a dovetail clamp on this end, and that's generally how I use it but it also has a hole for a stem like on my Interrapid indicator or for those screw-on dovetail stems I showed earlier. You can also mount your indicator on a surface gauge. This will let you slide the indicator across a part on a surface plate to compare the dimensions against gauge blocks or check for flatness, parallelism, or squareness. Many of the mounting methods I've already mentioned work on the surface gauge as well. 
Likewise, there are plenty of mounting options for the height gauge. Some indicators, like this Sterrett 196, come with a variety of accessories to mount it to surface gauges and height gauges. No discussion about indicator mounting would be complete without addressing the fine adjustments available on some of these bases. Not every mag base has one, and they're not always needed. For example, if you're dialing in a part in the lathe or the mill, you can just use the machine axes to zero the indicator. However, there are plenty more times when having a fine adjustment is handy or even essential because you have no other good way of adjusting the indicator to zero. Notice I said good way because you can always try turning the bezel to move the dial face, but you'll find it to be an exercise in frustration. Turning the bezel on these will cause the indicator to jump around and move, and you can find yourself chasing the zero back and forth. I use the bezel to get the face in a convenient orientation so I can read it, and then I try not to touch it again unless I have to. Anyway, back to the fine adjustments. A lot of these import bases have a pretty crude system for doing this, and it can be really floppy as you can see. It's also pretty far from where the indicator would be, so a small adjustment here makes a big difference down there. My Noga base has the adjustment right up here by the indicator, although they have some models that have it close to the magnet. It's a very fine pitched screw, so it isn't too fiddly, although with any fine adjustment you'll have a tendency to bump the setup around a little bit, and you'll see that more with fine resolution indicators. The surface gauge will also allow for fine adjustment, usually down here on the base. Height gauges will have it here on the slide, and it's usually some kind of split clamp like this, where you can tighten one half and then use the screw to finesse it into position. I really hope this sheds some light on the subject for you. If you have any questions or topics you'd like to see me cover in a future video, leave those down in the comments section below. Hit that like and subscribe button if you think I've earned it, and please consider supporting the channel over on Patreon like the wonderful people you can see on your screen right now. You might want to check out these other videos as well. On the right, I have a playlist of all of my quick machining tips. On the top left, I have my most recent video. And on the bottom left, there's a video YouTube thinks you'll enjoy as much as this one. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.